Welcome to CEO Connect, brought to you by CEO Solutions Group. In this month's episode, President and CEO Dave Adams discusses a commitment to a higher common ground. I often hear it said that as a nation, we've never been more divided. I also hear people lament that government can't seem to agree on anything that matters and that we're more partisan than ever before. And certainly the issues that challenge us today seem to always be politicized, whether COVID and the importance of wearing masks or the Black Lives Matter movement uh, and continued civil rights progress or the composition of the Supreme Court or any number of societal issues that are impacted by this year's uh, presidential election. And for our employees, many of them are feeling the stress that comes with these angry divisions in society, coupled with the pressures of working from home. And although there are work from home benefits like avoiding expensive and time consuming commutes, many seem to feel more isolated and in some cases feel lonely or even depressed. So for credit union leaders, we may find ourselves wondering if there is a role for us to play to help foster a culture where employees can engage in thoughtful, respectful conversations about many of these societal issues that weigh on their minds, affecting their otherwise positive outlook for uh, their futures. Many of us are engaging our teams already in virtual discussions about diversity, equity, and inclusion, and more specifically, the state of progress toward greater racial justice. And that's important. The high profile of these diversity, equity, and inclusion discussions at this moment in time in society really brought this to light for me. And I found myself wondering if we should reach further to foster shared understanding and a higher common ground on other societal issues that weigh on employees' minds. And certainly there isn't a more important issue today than helping us all strive for greater racial justice. Some examples though of other issues might be affordable health care, retirement planning, the cost of higher education, balancing work and childcare obligations, and personal development for career planning. Now I recently read an article titled Finding Higher Common Ground on Values published by the Center for Visionary Leadership. In this article, it suggested that a process for multi-stakeholder dialogue can create forums for discussion and deep listening where everyone is heard and real concerns are shared. That resonated with me. And many of us are, as I said, doing this with our teams now via Zoom calls on the topic of diversity, equity, and inclusion and racial justice. This gives our team members on that particular issue a positive belief that the organization cares about broader societal issues that also impact how they provide their core services. Finding both one-on-one -on -one meeting opportunities and small group forums to discuss these issues can make team members feel more appreciated and also provide for a learning experience for both supervisors and employees. And in doing so, we help our team members and ourselves feel less stressed about issues affecting personal and family security and growth. These conversations also project the organization appropriately as one that cares about more than the bottom line or performance metrics or uh, the company's own product offerings. This can give meaning to work and provide deeper respect for the role of leadership and there might also be a role for associations to have these kinds of dialogue sessions with member credit unions on topics other than, but including, diversity, equity, and inclusion. For me as a leader, I know that my role should be focused on creating a strategic vision, an operational structure, and a staff environment for executing on the plan and driving shared results for the credit unions that we work for. But as part of that, I realize more and more that uh, as part of creating a caring culture, I can be a catalyst as a leader for difficult conversations and finding higher common ground on issues that uh, lie outside the organization's primary 
focus. And many of these issues polarize us and make it more difficult for us to do our work. In doing this, I'm confident that my team will be better informed and more fulfilled in both their work and their outside interests. While many issues relate to financial well-being, it may also be possible to provide forums for less safe topics, like helping staff to find higher common ground on income equality or income equity, rather, tax policy, health care reform, and other issues being debated by public policymakers. While care should be given to avoid topics that challenge political and religious views, small safe forums can be provided for facilitated discussions that help staff understand both sides of any given societal topic, like the continued march for racial justice in our nation, which is such an important issue today. At the end of the day, even in the most divided society, we ought to find higher common ground and agreement on a range of important topics that are in front of us right now. Limiting ourselves to purely financial services issues and uh, issues that help us do our work more effectively can run the risk of diminishing or shortchanging our opportunities to really make a, a true community impact and to include our team in that effort. And to be clear, this isn't about the leader overstating or guiding consensus on topics, but rather it's about being a catalyst for thoughtful and respectful conversations. Ideally, we as leaders should participate as active listeners and learners, while depending on professional facilitation of some sort with all of the discussions. For the Michigan Credit Union League and CU Solutions Group employees, we're leaning on our diversity, equity, and inclusion impact team to advise management on processes for better one-on-one -on -one and small group discussions that will begin with the search for higher common ground on racial justice issues. Later, we hope to expand to other topics that help our teams address the issues that create personal and family stress in our lives. This commitment to group dialogue is an example of our desire to allow for critical conversations that help us foster a more caring culture for our team members. I suggest there might be five steps for creating this process. Number one, identify clear objectives for the outcome of the conversations, such as fostering a higher common ground of understanding and generating recommendations for internal and external organizational action. You can certainly see how that applies to uh, the racial justice issue. Number two, create and empower a team. In our case, we call it a diversity, equity, and inclusion team. And and work with them to create a clear charge and objectives with reasonable time allocations for full staff communication forums on an optional basis. Number three, prioritize topics and communicate a schedule for those topics. Include a mix of one-on-one -on -one coaching conversations between supervisors and employees, as well as smaller, voluntary, safe forums for discussions preferably assisted by an internal or external professional facilitator. Number four, measure progress by summarizing the results of participation and satisfaction levels by staff. Get feedback from the team to see if these exercises are worthwhile. And number five, make a long-term commitment and exercise patience in learning and iterating to improve the process. Celebrate this as an example of a caring culture that seeks to relieve stress and gain higher common ground on important issues. We're all lifelong learners and our positions should evolve as we age and learn. Too often, in my opinion, the inability of either party, Democrats or Republicans, to find common ground is founded in their unwillingness to set aside lifelong biases and to learn from facts and truth versus distorted media representations. Both sides are at fault. But we owe it to ourselves as leaders and teams to search for that higher common ground and to thereby exert our personal leadership influence in elections and in policy debates. Helping our teams expand their view on this will help them to be less cynical about government and politics and hopefully more engaged in helping to make real progress. This will lead to a better staff culture and a more fulfilled and satisfied workforce. That should translate 
into a more purpose-driven service delivery for those who, whom we serve as well.